Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Guns and Guitars, and today we are talking universal fit in-ear monitors for musicians. Now, this is a long anticipated video for you guys. I know you've been waiting a long time for my best budget in-ear monitors of 2020. The reason why I've been putting it off is because more and more brands keep sending me in-ear monitors to try. So 2020 has been a good year for in-ear monitors and I finally came up with what I feel like is a really good list of awesome universal fit budget-friendly in-ear monitors for musicians. Now, what this video is not, it's not for the casual music listener. So, if you are a bass head or an audiophile, you're just looking for music listening headphones, there are lots of YouTube videos out there for that. This is not one of them. This video is aimed primarily at musicians and audio engineers looking for live or recorded music reference monitors. That means we are looking for a wide range frequency response, neutral reference, and a large sound stage for good separation of instruments. So if that's what you're looking for, stick around. I'm Dan, this is Guns and Guitars. Let's get started. For this video, I'm gonna do something a little bit different than I have in the past. I'm only gonna talk about three different sets of in-ear monitors. And the reason for that is because I already have a pretty comprehensive list on the best budget in-ear monitors for 2018 and 2019. And so I'm only going to show you the top three that I feel like are actually better than 2018 and 2019. So if you want a full comprehensive list, check out those videos as well, because all the in-ear monitors mentioned in those videos are still an excellent value today and stack up nicely against the three that I'm gonna talk about today. Also, before before we get started, I want to remind you that if you want to get the full sound out of your budget in your monitors, you definitely need to invest in some of these memory foam ear tips. Okay, these are key to getting proper isolation and for transmitting those frequencies to the small bones of your ears. Don't use the included silicone tips that come with these things. Definitely invest in some memory foam ear tips. I'll put some links down in the description for the ones that I like to use. And this video actually has no sponsors. Okay, I've received so many in ear monitors throughout the year from different brands brands like KZ, KB Ear or K Beer, TRN, TRI, Smabat, how do we pronounce that? Yinyu, TWS, AT&T. I don't remember all the name brands, okay? There's a million of them. So I really just picked my top three for three different categories. All right, first up on the list, the best overall value in-ear monitors are the KB Ear or K Beer, however you pronounce them, KB06. Okay, now these are amazing little in-ear monitors. It is a triple driver hybrid design. So you got a dynamic driver to cover the low end and two balanced armature drivers to cover the mids and highs. And the result is a really neutral frequency response. I'll actually throw up a chart over there so you can actually verify this. And we'll go ahead and compare it to the frequency response of say the Shure SE 215s because that's what you guys always want me to compare these to because those are for some reason the golden child of the budget universal fit in-ear monitors. Now you can see comparing the graphs that these actually have a more neutral sound signature and because of the triple driver hybrid design they actually have a much larger sound stage okay this will cover any instrument just fine now the sure se 215s used to come in at about 200 bucks now these cheaper in-ear monitors have put a lot of pressure on sure so you can actually get them as low as 79 dollars these days but even still these are just 28 dollars and they wipe the floor with Shure SE 215s. Okay, 28 bucks, less than a third the price for a way better in-ear monitor. Now I've been using these for about six months now. They've held up strong. They have an excellent cable, although they don't have a cable tie. So you gotta do my ghetto little twist tie trick. Basically I just take the included black twist tie and I turn it into a cable tie. It works wonderful for free. So if you are really any musician on a budget, these have you covered. Now, especially if maybe you are a worship leader and you're looking to buy some in-ear monitors for your team, instead of buying one Shure SE 215, you could buy three of these KB06s and cover three of your musicians for the price of one. Now, I would say the one negative criticism that I have for these is that the low mids could be just a tad muddy at times, which means they're not my first choice for a bass player, okay? You really don't want muddy low mids as a bass player. So, if you're a bass player, you definitely wanna check out my recommendation for rhythm section players. Now, I do have sort of an honorable mention here for this category, uh, the CVJ CSA. Now, this is a dual dynamic driver design. 
Um, but these things sound really good and they're actually $2 cheaper than the KB06s. So if you're really penny pitching and you really can't afford the extra $2, these will definitely get you by. But in my opinion, the triple hybrid driver design of the KB06s is well worth the extra $2. Okay, so for my top pick for what I call the rhythm section players, that would be bass players, drummers, keys, synthesizers, any of those extended range instruments that cover both the super low lows and the super high highs, I recommend the CCA C12s. Now these are actually a six hybrid driver design, which means you have a dynamic driver to cover the deep low sub frequency range. Then you've got five balanced armature drivers to cover the low mids, mids, upper mids, and highs. And the result is you just have huge frequency response all the way down to the deep gut rumbling lows up to super crispy and clear high end. These things sound stellar. Now, when you look at this frequency response graph, you'll notice that it is slightly scooped out in the mid-range, which makes these not super ideal for more mid-range specific instruments, the ones that depend on mid-range to develop their tone, like electric guitar, vocalists, violins, etc. So if you consider yourself sort of that other musician category, you want to stick around for my next pick. But for rhythm section players, there is not a better earphone. Even when you compare this frequency response to that of the Shure SE215s, you'll see that it still has a more neutral frequency response, but because of the six hybrid driver technology inside these, the soundstage is enormous and the separation of instruments is amazing. You can pick out anything in the mix and especially as a bass player, I appreciate being able to hear that hi-hat and that kick drum come through nice and clear, as well as the vocals leading the band, right? So out of all the in-ear monitors that I've tested and reviewed, these are actually my favorites. So these beat out the KZZS10s from 2018 and the CCAC10s from 2019. I think that these are my favorite. Of course, I am a bass player. Oh, and I didn't mention the price. $49. I cannot believe how much sound you can get for $49. Now, like I said earlier on in this video, I have got in-ear monitors literally coming out my ears, okay? I've gotten so many pairs throughout this year from various brands that I don't know what to do with. So, if you are one of my $10 or more Patreons, that means if your name is down in the description listed under the $10 plus Patreons, you are getting a free pair of in-ear monitors, okay? So if you're one of my $10 or more Patreons, go ahead and send me a message through Patreon with your shipping address, and I will send you a set of in-ear monitors. Now, if I have some left over, I'll go ahead and trickle those down into my $5 Patreons. So if your name is listed as a $5 Patreon, go ahead and send me your shipping address as well, and I will ship those extras out as a first come first serve basis so the sooner you can get me your address the more likely you will get a pair of in-ear monitors now i don't want to have to go through and respond to a bunch of comments of like hey i play the kazoo which ones do you recommend for me or hey i play the worst chicken <laughs> What do you recommend for me? If you're not a rhythm section player and you don't want the KBO6s, these are the ones for you. Now, surprisingly, these actually only have one driver, but it's a large 10 millimeter carbon nanotube driver, whatever that means. Well, I can tell you what it means. It means they can fit a lot of sound into a tiny package. So if you've got small ears or small ear canals, these are extremely comfortable as opposed to some of the other recommendations on this list. Also, 10 Hi-Fi has consistently made my best budget list for the last three years. And there's a reason why. And that's because they consistently give a very neutral, true reference frequency response. I mean, look at this graph. Look at this graph. How they can fit all that sound in such a tiny package. I mean, I sound like a broken record. I think I've said that line every single video that I've made. But 10 Hi-Fi knows how to fit an incredible amount of sound in a tiny little package. But one thing that 10 Hi-Fi has lacked in the past necessarily because of their single and dual driver designs is that large soundstage. Well, I don't know what they did with this carbon nanotube 10 millimeter driver, but they fixed it. Okay, the soundstage on this 
is enormous. Now, if anything, it may lack a tiny little bit of low end, but I don't think you're going to miss it unless you're a bass player or drummer. I think everyone else is absolutely going to love these. Now, all this sound in such a tiny little package does come at a price, and these are probably the least budget friendly on the list at $99. Of course, that's still well under pretty much any big name manufacturer, right? So you're still getting way more sound for the money, even as compared to the SE215s, these blow it out of the water. Now for that price, you also get a couple other features that these other ones don't give you, like a really nice cable that does have a little cable tie bead on it, and a really nice carrying case. Now some of you guys might not be looking for those features specifically, but it does make that $99 price tag a little bit easier to swallow. I would say though, the best thing about these is that you can listen to them for hours and hours and hours and never feel any fatigue. At least that's been my experience. They are so comfortable, not only physically on the ears, but also on the sound that your ears are absorbing. They don't fatigue your ears. They don't make your ears sore. Now, if you're thinking that you probably can afford $99 for some in-ear monitors, you might wanna stick around for next week's video where I talk about the best budget custom molded in-ear monitors. Now, you might be thinking, no, those are way out of my price range. They usually start about six, seven, eight hundred dollars right? Well, I found a couple of brands that actually come in well under $500 and one that will even get you close to like $160. So if you've always thought that custom molded in-ear monitors are out of your budget, you might be wrong. So definitely subscribe and stick around for next week's video. I'll throw it up there when it's done. And until next time, I'm Dan, this is Guns and Guitars, and I'll see you in that next video.